readiness here. In this video, we are going to build an exciting feature for a productivity app using React and TypeScript. We'll create an interactive timeline that helps users track their time seamlessly by adding, editing, and deleting sessions, all without traditional input fields. Instead, the interface will look like a calendar app. While the increaser source code is private, you can still explore all the reusable components and utilities over a Trojan kit. The link to the repository is in the description. To start, let's establish the essential React state for this feature. The mutable state will have two main fields. First, weekday, which represents the day of the week selected for editing, editing, or deleting a session. Second, is current set, which updates when a user clicks on an existing session or start creating a new. We'll also extend the set type with an optional index field to identify which session is being edited. This will help us know when we are editing an existing session versus creating a new one. In an increaser, we represent a work session as an interval with start and end times stored as timestamps. The project ID field links the session to the project it belongs to. Our context state will have a few essential components. First, a mutable state that keeps track of changes and a set state function to update it. Then an array of sets representing sessions for the chosen day. And finally, an interval reflecting the time frame of the selected day. For past days, the interval spans the entire day while for the current day, it ranges from the start up to the current time. To access the context state, we use a simple helper function called createContextHook. This function makes sure the context is available and throws an error if it's not. The track time context provider will handle the mutable state starting with weekday set to the current day of the week and current set set to null. To provide date interval and sets to the context, we adjust the state using different hooks. This way, the right data is always accessible and up to date. Our time tracking feature is divided into three main parts, a header, a content area for user interactions with sessions, and a footer with action buttons. By setting flex1 to all containers, the content area fills the entire vertical space. The panel component from writing kit keeps the content and footer organized, separated by a clear line for a neat visual distinction. The header is a Flexbox row container. The title aligns to the left, while two selectors sit on the right. The project selector only appears if the user is creating or editing a session. The track time title component adapts the title based on the current state. If no session is selected, it says manage sessions. If the session has an index, meaning an existing session is being edited, it changes to edit session. Otherwise, it reads add session. Both the project selector and weekday selector are drop downs built on the expandable selector component from Ryzen Kit. Even though current set can sometimes be empty, whenever the project selector is visible, it confirms that the current set is indeed populated. That's where the should be present utility comes in to make sure the value is not null. In Increaser, the app locks down the week and month total for each project when they are set. So they can be changed. Because of this, the weekday selector only lets you pick days that are still in the current week or month. The selector is also disabled when the user is editing or creating a session. The track time footer component shows the delete set action option if the user is editing an existing session. When creating or editing a session, also submit and cancel buttons appear. If no session is being edited or created, the add set prompt will be displayed. If the user decides to delete a session, they just need to click the delete button. This will trigger the use delete set mutation hook to remove the session and reset current set to now, marking the end of the editing process. The use delete set mutation hook optimistically update the client state and then call the API to remove a session based on its interval. On the server side, we use the same delete set function from the increaser entities utils package. This generates a new array that excludes the session we want to delete. If you are interested in how to build backends in a TypeScript monitor pool, check out the video linked in the description. 
Since no two sessions can have the same start and end timestamps, we identify them by the intervals. To compare these intervals, we use the iEqual intervals function, which relies on the have equal field utility from RisingKit. This checks if two objects have identical values for specific fields. The submit set action component has a straightforward rule. Session can overlap. Depending on whether the index field is present, we call either the add set or update set mutation. Both hooks follow a similar pattern to the delete set mutation we discussed earlier. When the user clicks add session, we update the current set to a new session. Its start time is the end of day interval minus the default duration, while the end time is set to the end of day interval. The session's project ID starts with the first active project's ID. For converting minutes into milliseconds, we use the convert duration utility from RisingKit. At the core of this time tracking feature is a timeline. It layout uses a relative wrapper that takes up all available space with Flex1. Inside an absolutely positioned container with overflow Y outer keeps the content scrollable while filling the entire available space. The time space component draws lines with hourly markers between the starts at and ends at timestamp. By using the milliseconds to pixel function, we convert milliseconds to pixels ensuring precise scaling. The component has a fixed height, determined by passing the difference between starts at and ends at through millisecond to pixel. To generate an array of hourly timestamps within the range, we use the get hours in range utility. For vertically centering the time labels and lines, we employ the position absolutely center horizontal component from rising key. To scroll the timeline to the bottom initially, which would be the current day when today selected, we use the scroll into view on first appearance from rising key. This ensures the element scrolls into view as soon as it appears. In the sessions component, we loop through each set for the day, rendering a session component for each. The position of each session is managed through the top and height attributes, which are calculated using the session start and end timestamp combined with the millisecond to pixel function. To prevent overlap with the session currently being edited via the set editor, we avoid rendering it in the session component. Sessions are only clickable when no session is being edited. When a session is clicked, the current set field gets updated with the session's details and its index. The session's color is determined using the getProjectColor utility, which returns the project's color in HSLA format. If you are interested in managing colors with HSLA in React, watch the video link in the description about managing colors in HSLA. By using the getVariant method on an HSLA instance, you can easily modify the alpha channel for varying transparency. To enhance the visual appeal, we fill the session with diagonal lines using the lines filler component from RisingKit. The pattern is created by a component that fills its parent space and measures its dimensions. We use trigonometric calculations to determine the correct line length and container offset. The container is made wider than the parent to ensure it fully covers the space with diagonal lines. The lines are rotated using the transform property and arranged in a Flexbox row container creating evenly spaced lines. To customize the color, we use the border property to inherit the parent's color offering flexible styling options. For editing sessions, we have the set editor component. When a user interacts with a session, the active control state changes to one of three values, position, start, or end. Each state renders interactive zones that mainly change the cursor appearance to indicate their function. These zones capture the pointer down event and adjust the active control state accordingly. They don't have a specific visual design, but provide feedback to the user through the cursor change. The position absolutely center horizontal component makes it easy to position an element horizontally in the center. It wraps the content in nested style components for precise alignment. First, there is a wrapper that is absolutely positioned and extends to the left edge, 
providing the base position and layer. Next is a container that aligns its content using a flex layout for vertical centering. Finally, an absolutely positioned content diff centers the content horizontally. By setting the top property to handle vertical alignment and optionally using full width to stretch it across the available width, this component efficiently manages horizontal centering, offering a reusable way to position elements absolutely. To calculate the new position and size of the session accurately, we keep a reference to the container element. This allows us to get its bounding box and compute coordinates based on it. We also maintain a reference to the edited session, ensuring it's visible by listening for changes and calling the scroll into view method. This strategy keeps the edited session centered in the viewport. When the pointer up and pointer cancel events occur, we reset the active control state to null, meaning the user has stopped interacting with the session. During the pointer move event, we check if the user is actively engaged. If they are, we calculate the new timestamps based on the pointer's position, adjusting the session start and end times accordingly. The enforced range utility keeps the session interval within the day's bounds. To help the user set a precise interval, we use the floating interval duration component below the session. We display the formatted start and end times of the session as well as the duration. These are separated by a dot using the H stack separated by component from resident kit. That's all. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.